So, oh, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Um, today we are working on writing a Wayland client from scratch. Um, we are on day two of this project, and the goal for today is to get some form of window up and running that we can interact with. Um, so, the context here is that we are working on our, like, kind of long-term project of trying to understand the Linux graphics stack top to bottom, right? So uh, I open a window, right? I have a window right here. What What is this thing, right? Um, this is rendering stuff on the screen. Rendering stuff on the screen has to go through a GPU driver at some point, right? And like this stuff that's running on the side here is like rendering an OpenGL and that's like issuing GPU calls to do stuff, right? And like, what what's that doing, right? And the, the overall goal here is it would be, it'd be nice at some point in our future to make a graphics card. And in order to make a graphics card, I feel like I want a good solid base understanding of like, what does a GPU actually do? And to understand that, we need to understand um, like what, what is done in hardware and what is done in software. And to understand that, we have to know what the software does, right? And so we've been tackling this problem from a couple different angles. We, uh, the other day we're doing like raw dogging of Linux DRM stuff to get like uh, stuff rendered on the screen without a window manager. Um, a couple days ago we were working on uh we we made like a pci device driver to try to understand part of how like if we were to implement a driver for a gpu it would be a pci device and like what does how do you make a virtual pci device and how do you make a driver for that because like the idea is that the end of this project we want to be able to uh construct a application window that renders some 3d accelerated stuff from inside a virtual machine so you know how do we get stuff from in and out of the virtual machine and Today we are looking at um, how does a window exist and how do you get like an OpenGL context for that window and stuff, right? So the goal for today is just get the window open running and then tomorrow hopefully look at the OpenGL stuff. Maybe if we go, everything goes really smoothly today, then maybe that's not the case. Um, but yeah, part of, part of the stack is you have, you know, your window manager is rendering stuff with OpenGL. Um, we render stuff with OpenGL in our windows. How does our, win our stuff get OpenGL from our window to OpenGL to the parent window? Who fucking knows, right? Who knows? So that's what we're working on. Um, and we are on day two of this. Yesterday, we, we were looking at the Wayland spec and kind of our understanding of this thing at this point in time is like, here is my monitor on, on my desk, right? He's got a little monitor stand and he's got a little light here. Um, but in here, you have Kwin right? I'm using Kwin. It could be any application, any window manager, but I happen to be using Kwin, right? So I've got like, you know, taskbar items down here and like some like little indicators down inside. And in here, we have a window that's being drawn, right? And in here, I might like draw like a little smiling, smiling face or something, right? How, how do I get this window? How do I get this window? And so at this point, what we are doing is Wayland inside him has a little socket. He puts on some socks and uh, this is like a Unix socket. This is connected to by, this is like exposed, I guess, at like some directory Wayland, land zero or something. You open this file and then you just start chatting with the guy, right? And theoretically, we haven't really quite got there yet, but theoretically, once we do enough, enough chatter with this thing, he then says, oh, you want a window? I'll give you a window. Here you go, buddy. Um, and so this whole, like, how do you chat with him? is specified by this uh, Wayland specification. So Wayland itself is not, it's not anything, right? It's more like a set of rules of how you talk to somebody who does something, right? So we have this process, Kwin. Kwin's drawing stuff. Well, how do we, how do we draw stuff? How do we get asked to draw stuff for us? And so what we've got through so far is uh, we, we call this command get registry and he lists a bunch of stuff, right? So if I call uh, zig build and we run our little client right now we call get registry and he returns back to us hey i have a compositor version 5 i have a zwp tablet manager version 2 version 1 <laughs> i have an xegwm base version 4 and as he returns that stuff back to us we can then bind to these interfaces and do stuff with them right so each of these interfaces uh represents like some part of the either like a uh fully fledged or uh unstable or you know Spe somewhat specific part of the Wayland spec. And if we look at these, we can say like, okay, so I want to buy, I have WL compositor. Well, W compositor is part of the core Wayland spec and he has a WL compositor thing. And so we like bind to this interface and then we can start issuing calls on this interface. The calls are done by just like, you know, you're, you're kind of like on the wire in some way. Um, you're using Unix sockets. So it's not really technically a wire, but it's a lot like a wire um, where you specify like, I'm going to send you a 
this like message header that's going to define um, what object I'm talking to. So when we bind to this WL compositor, we say WL compositor, let me give you ID two, please. And then later you say, hey, I would like to issue um, function zero on object two, and here are the parameters. And so that's what this is here. So you have like W compositor has function zero, function one, and these functions have these parameters um, that are defined by this XML specification. And so what I want to work on today is continuing on with this to try to figure out how we get a window. So what, we've, what, we, what we're guessing right now is we have this create surface thing. And I believe we saw somewhere on here that he also talked about um, a, we somehow ended up at the concept of XDG surface. So yeah, so here they say uh, WL shell, we can get a surface, right? So we, when you make a surface, you create a surface and he says the compositor is, uh oh, where was it? There was like a big header for this section somewhere. I thought. Maybe it was under WL surface was where we were seeing this before, which will be done here. Yes, here we go. A surface is a regular rectangular area that can be displayed on zero or more outputs. Sounds a lot like a window. And can be shown any number of times at the compositor's discretion. Can they can present WL buffers, receive user input, and define local coordinate system? Okay, whatever. But what he says somewhere in here is, uh, he says that you should create one of these with like XDG shell. So WL shell, I think he linked, he linked me WL shell somewhere. Somewhere he linked me WL shell which I don't really know what it is, but then WL shell says, no, 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 we're not, oh yeah, here he goes. So the surface, uh, a window can be defined by a shell, by shell protocol, e.g. WL shell gets shell surface. And you go to WL shell and he says like, don't fucking use this, use XDG shell instead. So that's where we got. We were struggling at the end of last stream because we had a little bit of problems with this new ID part of the specification, but we fixed, we, fi we found the root cause of that off, uh, at the end of stream and we have fixed that in happy hour today. So we are moving on from binding this compositor interface and trying to get a handle to one of these XDG shell things. So that's where we're at. And I think let's just get into it. Let's get into it. So let's uh, start with uh, get XDG shell. Let get an XDG shell. All right, so the way that this all works is it's all event driven and completely asynchronous, right? So we uh, we send this like get registry command and we and the Wayland compositor responds with a bunch of events. And some of these events will say, hey, here is an interface I support. And when we see that interface, we should like bind to it is kind of the idea here. So um, we are going to say, if we want to talk to this XGG shell interface, which we do, um, then we are going to have to detect when that case happens, which we should be able to do here. Uh, and we say, if we see XGG WM base, I think is what it said in the protocol explorer. Let's see. Let's see. Um, yes, XGG WM base. So this thing is we're going to try to call get XGG surface on this eventually. So if we see an XGG WM base, we should make one of these things. Um, so we've kind of like, kind of, we were restructuring the way that we set this stuff up pre-stream and we kind of settled towards the very end of the happy hour stuff on this pattern here where we have like a a object that represents the interface um and then that object will kind of construct like the parameters of that thing so he says well i'm going to do this set of actions and then we do like we use this wl writer type which does um it enumerates the field of this structure and um, writes out the correct representation of those in the lower level wire format. Um, so all we have to do here is say like, write this thing with this ID. This, this API will probably evolve a little bit, but for now, let's just at least follow this pattern because it seems like our favorite so far. Um, it cannot be completely compile time because some of the, the fields have like runtime lengths associated with them. So we had a little bit of fun struggling with that at the beginning of the stream, but uh, that's okay. We had, so this, this was the older version that we were working with where we were kind of saying, we're going to construct this type and we'll return it and, and do something with it. Um, it just turns out that that doesn't generically work as well because of the runtime -ness. So I'm gonna kind of scrap this concept and we're gonna start afresh, XCG WM base. And so this is gonna be the WM base ID. Every object, every interface has an ID and we are going to look for, I guess the one thing that we care about on here is going to be get XGG surface. So we're gonna make a function, get XDG surface. And we have said we are taking in a writer and the parameters that we're going to send to this thing. Uh, this might change later. 
maybe maybe it's gonna be maybe we're gonna do something more like um get surface Oh yeah, this feels like it's gonna feel good. This is it's gonna get, feel good. So here have an XDG surface ID and a WL surface ID. Surface ID is U32, and the uh, WL surface ID is a U32 as well. And then all we have to do here is say we are going to make one of these things. Um, params is get surface probably. And then we are just going to take those parameters and we're going to call WL writer write with params as well as our kind of major ID. Um, and so maybe this function is a little bit like un uh, unnecessary, but maybe it's fine. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll play with it a little light later. So, okay. Okay, so we are going to make this WM base abstraction now. So we're going to have var xdg WM base is a xdg WM base. Okay, crazy, crazy, I know. And here, we are going to allocate a new ID for this thing, which we kind of did here. And this is just going to have like ID allocate. And then we also have to bind to this thing. So we have to say, hey, I would love, love to kind of, you know, I would, I, I'd like you, the compositor, to know that I care about this thing, is essentially what this is doing. Essentially. Okay. So let's just kind of build and run that and make sure that nothing errors out at us. Uh, so this is not called ID here. This should be called, like, uh wm base id here and so no errors looks good and what we can do is we can prove to ourselves actually that this doesn't work right if we pass in like an incorrect version here what we should see is we should see an error message pop up that say hey you we have version 4 of this interface but you asked for 9999 so we're just gonna like give the fuck up and shut you down that's kind of like Kwin's response to us doing that. So that's like a good good indication that we are at least doing what we think we're doing. So now we have access to this interface, and we want to call get xg service because we believe that that's going to give us a window. We don't know yet, but that's kind of like what we hope. And so let's try to do that. So he says I need to take in an existing WL surface. So we need to create a WL surface, which I think comes from WL compositor create surface. Um. And once we have that service, then we want to give it to a, um, we're going to give it something. So, okay. So WL surface, does WL surface have like an interface? He does. He does. Okay. So we are going to make some form of like WL surface thing in the same way that we have abstraction for these. I guess we need a, an abstraction for the WL surface as well. So we're going to have like WL surface. I guess this is kind of going to go away. Maybe we'll just call it surface because we've kind of been omitting this uh, WL parts. Kind of in all of the rest of our naming things. And what does he look like? I guess we, we don't actually care. Maybe about any of these things, to be honest. We're not going to, we don't, I guess we don't need to create the abstraction for this until we actually try to act on it. So instead for now, I'm actually going to say, I'm just going to say we, we're going to keep track of the surface ID. Okay. And then we are going to try to create one. So this chunk code we like kind of like stubbed out yesterday, but we hadn't actually checked if it was working yet because we didn't get this far. Um, but it should be like, okay, we are trying to work with a compositor. And if he doesn't exist, then we are not ready to do this yet. Maybe in the future we will receive a message that tells us that the compositor is available, but as of right now, we don't have it, so we'll continue. Um, then we will try to create this WL service ID. And then we will call compositor by a create surface with the writer, compositor, and WL service ID. This is kind of, I guess, just the like this. This is kind of the pattern that we've, we have 
stumbled our, into. Okay, so he has a create surface and he takes an ID. Okay, so create surface, but not a writer. Right, because this is using the other version that we also liked. So we can actually say that we have like a message is this and we will call like write request for socket and message for now. For now, because there is no runtime data, so we don't have to get crazy with it. Um, he's mad because make header requires a compositor ID and a type. Is what he's looking for, sure. Sure, sure, sure. And then create surface needs to have an op defined where create surface is on compositor. He seems to be the first method, which means that he's index zero. Okay, so it looks like that probably bound okay because we don't see any errors. Let's try uh, throwing in like an, uh, you know, invalid. Yeah, so he's expecting, he's expecting not that. So it looks like this, if we were doing this wrong, then we would crash, which is great. And then once we have the WL service ID, we can try to connect to the, we can try to make an XDG surface out of that thing. Which we don't really know what we're gonna do with yet, but we're just kind of like poking and prodding, stumbling around until we look at something sane. So we have the surface ID, and then we are looking for the XDG WM base. So this the creating XDG surface requires both the surface that we made as well as the WM base thing. And then we will do the same thing. We have ID allocate and we call uh, get XDG service on this thing. And in here, we said that we were going to pass in XCG service ID and WL service ID. Okay, he's not quite happy there. Uh, maybe because this guy, we forgot to write adjust the first function argument. He needs an op associated with him. So get surface is zero, one, two. Okay, so we sent a surface request and then let's try sending like an intentionally invalid surface ID just to make sure that it would error out if we fucked up. And it would, right? He says invalid argument, so that's great. So if we just give him the correct surface ID, he seems to be happy, but we still don't have a window. We still don't have a window. So what do we have to do to do that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so maybe we can go back to this thing we were referencing yesterday. This guy's post. Write a GUI from scratch. And somewhere in here, he must, he must get the XGG surface. Uh, so he also creates a, he creates a top level thing after. So where does that come from? XCG service create top level. Let's see if we can understand what that means. So this thing makes an XCG surface. So let's read about what an XCG surface actually is. Is this an evolution of your DRM investigation? Yep. 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 So the idea here is that we're trying to tackle the concept of like, how does the graphic stack work from like several angles, right? And this angle is like, how does a window exist? And how does a window draw stuff? Um, in order to draw stuff, we need to make the window. And then we, we are eventually going to look into like the open jail invest, the open jail negotiation between like a uh, normal windowed process with EGL versus like DRM directly, you know? So an XCG surface. This is an interface that may be implemented by a WL surface for implementations that provide a desktop style user interface. It provides a base set of functionality required to construct user interface elements requiring management by the comp compositor, such as top level windows, menus, etc. The types of functionality are split into XCG service roles. Ah, okay. So creating an XCG service does not set the role for a WL service. In order to map to an XCG service, the client must create a role specific object using get top level get popup. The WL service for any given XCG service can have at most one role and may not be assigned to a role not on the service. So it sounds like 
like they're kind of saying that like if I right click here, this stuff is like another window. It's like all, almost what this sounds like, right? Like get pop up. Um, so the client must call WL service commit on the corresponding WL service for the XG service state to take effect. Creating XG service from a WL service which has a buffer attached or committed is a client error. And any attempts for a client to manipulate a buffer prior to the first XG service configure call must also be treated as errors. I haven't seen that configure ever, but we'll we'll see if that makes sense. So, oh, I see. So configure is a response from the server. So probably, uh, probably we're going to call get talk level or something, and then he's going to configure. And then it looks like we have to act a configure. If a client c commits the surface in response to the configure event, the client must make an ACK configure request sometime before the commit request, passing along the serial configure request. For instance, the top level surface of the compositor might use this information to move a surface to the top left only when the client has drawn itself with a maximized or full screen state. Uh, okay. Sure. I didn't see that in the example that we were kind of looking at over here. He kind of seems to just call get top level and commit. So we can try that. We can try that and just see what happens. We can try that. So let's call get top level, which is a field, which is a function on XDG surface. So we do not have an XDG surface abstraction yet. We have XDG WM base, but not an XDG surface. So our XDG surface is going to look like, he's gonna have a surface ID like this. And He's going to have a get top level function, which is going to have an equivalent get top level command, right? And our get top level command just returns a new ID to construct an XDG top level. So we're going to do this. And this is get top level looks like the zeroth first element here. So we're going to say operation is one. We have a top level ID. And we're going to say get top level here is takes in an XDG surface a writer and params of get top level, boom. And then actually it looks like this kind of all kind of just works for free right now. I love that on Wayland you just have a raw SHM buffer for rendering. That's one of the options. One of the options, not the only option, um, which we will look at later. I think that there's a way to use, I mean, we might as well, we might as well give the preview. There's this thing called Linux DMA buff where you can create a file descriptor that represents a texture that you've rendered on a graphics card through open G through EGL, or I think also through Vulkan, or maybe through DRM IOCTA calls directly, like dumb buffer calls. I'm not sure. I want to experiment with that, with that later. But it looks like there's a way to basically use these instead of a big shared memory buffer. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? Okay. Where are we? XE shell, get top level. So he... Does not, he just creates top level. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? What are we gonna do here? We are going to write our surface ID as our parameters and our parameters and our parameters are just top level ID. Perfect, perfect. So our XGG surface ID here now is gonna turn into an XGG surface. And here, if we're gonna say if XGG surface is null, we make the XGG surface So it's going to look something like this. Boom, 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 boom. And then we're going to use here XGG surface, surface ID. Okay. So then once we've done that, it's fair for us to just pipeline the next thing. So it's going to be XGG surface, get top level with our writer. And our top level ID is just going to be ID allocate. Boom. Okay, so here now, who knows what's gonna happen? But let's just kind of run it and see. So here he's mad because somewhere we have to write to try. So we still have no window, but we should have a top level thing that we can work with now. So now the question is, what does this thing do? Uh, I guess he said the, the, uh, the example, he just called this followed by a surface commit right after. So we could try doing something like, uh, that means that our Wayland surface also needs to be an interface. 
So maybe we'll kind of like throw this around here somewhere. So it's going to be surface has a surface ID. And he is going to be defined by WL surface. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. So he has a commit function. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <laughs> uh, const op equals 6. Boom. And his parameters are nothing. Wow, wow, wow. So that should actually be easy as shit. So that should like legitimately just be, I guess our pattern is still that we take in a writer. And then we just do a uh, writer write make header. I guess we don't even call make header here probably. We just kind of probably do this manually. Header le. And we do this ID is equal to self surface ID. Op is six and size is size of header le. Wow, strange. And it should be something like this. Something like this. And then we should just be able to call WL surface commit. Or I guess in this case it's s dot commit because we've already extracted this thing as something else. Which means that we have uh, WL surface is equal to surface. <laughs> there we go. Uh huh, uh huh. Yup. Boom. This feels like everything works so far. Feels like everything is working so far. S commit expected one argument found zero. What does he expect? Writer, that's true. That is a good point. Okay. Uh, and then here we can take this by const. That's fine. That is fine. Uh, then here we need a write struct actually is what I meant to write here. Um, okay. So I think we have a window, right? If I look at the taskbar down here, a little W is showing up, but it does nothing. It does nothing. So we're, we're looking, we're, we're in like a pretty okay spot here. Pretty good spot. So how do we like get the window to like have decorations and shit? You know? Um, let's maybe look at. I wonder if this comes from the XDG shell thing. Right? So maybe we're supposed to, you know, resize him and set the title, right? Maybe you could imagine. Window like properties such as maximize, blah blah blah, is responsible for providing the full intended visual representation of the top level. Which, depending on the window state, may mean things like a title bar, blah, blah, blah. Unmapping an XG top level means that the service cannot be shown to the compositor until it is explicitly mapped again. All active operations, move and resize, are canceled, and the attributes, blah, blah, are discarded. So I would be interested, interested to see if we can start, um, like, what happens if we call set title here? Well, maybe we should look at what the, our example does. So this guy talks about rendering a frame red rectangle. So he just creates a WL, he uses his WL surface and he attaches something to it. Um, and then he also has the act configure thing here which we are not detecting here. And we should, we should, we should uh, make sure that we are correctly receiving events here. So it's kind of strange to me. Oh, we do we do see this. So here we should say, uh, this this should be like a, a warning log. And this should be like a got response for unknown interface. And this should be, uh, we should just stash the ID here.
Right, so he says, oh, I've got unknown responses for interface seven and six. That's weird. That's weird. And so what are interfaces seven and six? Well, they're probably this WL surface and this XDG surface would be my guess, which means that when we create these things, we have to register them as like things that can have things happen on them. I think that is a thing that we have to do. So the way this works is we have a hash map of uh, interface ID or IDs to like interface types. And so I guess here, we will say that we also have an interface type of uh, WL surface and XCG surface. Okay, and then here when we create these things, we will just shove these things in there. So we'll say, hey, let's say that we have a thing at WL surface, surf, surface ID, and his ID is, or sorry, his type is WL surface. And we're going to do the same thing for XCG surface. Okay. So now we must handle those cases. So we'll say, hey, we got, we got a message that we haven't handled. And uh, XCG surface. And we'll just say, uh, stood log warn, um, do not handle WL surfaces events. Right, and we'll say the same for XG service. Uh, he is mad on interfaces put, so we need to kind of, you know, handle errors there. And so we actually still have not got seven. So which of these many things are seven? It could be XG could be the XCG WM base as well. Could be, could be, so we could try that. I guess we should probably just log the interface IDs, but you know, ain't got no time for that. So, but we know this is eight, which means that this has to be seven. It has to be. Uh, XCG surface base. I think it's, that's what it's called. Uh, hello, XCG at WM base, sorry. So we will just do the same thing, the same thing. XGG surface, no. When do we create our XGGB? That's here. XGGG WM base, WM base ID goes to WM base. There we go. And then we have this, and we do the same thing. Uh, really? Hold on. Oh, it's the surface. I'm just a dumbass. I'm just a dumbass. Oh, but we have XG surface here. We have XG surface. ID allocate. Um, no, I'm actually confused. Who allocates here? So I thought it would be this one. Or compositor. I guess we also didn't check compositor. Um, I guess what we should do is we should just break point here. <laughs> That's what we should do. That makes a lot more sense because then we'll get a real answer. A break here, run, yes. And so can we print out the compositor? Compositor ID is three, so it's not compositor. Uh, what are our options? Oh my God. So we also think we could be like XG WM base. That's four. Okay. WL surface. That's five. Okay. XG surface is six.
Uh, I think it said seven, right? Yeah, so XG surface is six. So, oh, it's the top level? Ah, I'm just a dumbass. Okay, so this was allocated here. Then we have top level here. That's what we're missing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. So now we, I guess we might need a top level, XG top level thing. Um, God. You know what I want to do? You know what I want to do? I want to fucking write a code generator. <laughs> uh, I think that is what I want to do. Let's, let's try. There's just like so much stuff on here. And it'd be kind of fun. Kind of fun. To do what the way Lib Wayland does, and Lib Wayland parses this XML and generates a bunch of C code out of it. And I feel like one, we have so many like interfaces right now that are like slightly differently inter like implemented, which we can fix um, by generating them all at once. And as we like improve our interfaces, we can like adjust how they are supposed to be used all at once. And two, then we don't have to spend so much time kind of like jumping back and forth between like, oh, what parameters this thing accept? We can just like know it. And I think that we have like a good enough idea of like what an initial implementation of this thing would look like uh, to fucking run it. Uh, so I'm, I'm a fan of just doing that. Uh, it's kind of funny too. It's kind of funny too. So let's, let's just fucking run it. Get add dash u, get commit dash m checkpoint. And let's uh, put a pause on this and be like uh, 36, 37, uh oh. Write a code generator. Um, okay. So I think I'm quite happy with the concept of this. Uh, WL writer as well as the way that this works where we have you know handle display event uh well let's think about this if we have a handle display event he is going to like parse these response messages so as we get a response we're going to map them from object i from like object id to some sort of parser for that interface's events. Okay, so we have like two, we have like events and we have like requests. The events, we can just structure the events as a structure, right? Our, our events will be like, this could be ping, structure, ping, element, serial, U32. Should be pretty straightforward. And so what we will do is probably we will have like, xdg surface get event feels like what's what's going to happen and here we'll pass in like a buff and this will return like xdg surface event which will be a union of elements okay that feels reasonable to me and then on the inside on the side of where we're writing stuff i think that we will do we will just essentially generate the like this type of pattern where we have like a element, right or right. Yeah, and this doesn't depend on jack shit, which is kind of nice. This doesn't depend on anything. Except for WL writer. Except for WL writer. Okay. So, I think we're going to do, maybe we're gonna say like, source WL writer. is going to look like this boom 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 he will get his own file he'll get his own file and i guess maybe we'll kind of just kind of do it in line i think he's probably going to end up being a generic type because here we want like the writer to be in any type right so it's going to be like this this is going to take in this. 
and then we're gonna say return a struct which looks like this and this struct is gonna have like you know a type that's like const self is equal to this boom and this would be like yo I have a self boom okay uh, okay header le is undeclared here which is a problem I guess it makes sense for this to have a functionally uh, const header le the header type can also be defined here instead of in the generated code I think that makes sense as well mm. so this guy kind of just like lives like this boom 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 and then here we'll say const header oh wl writer is equal to import wl writer zig and const header le is equal to wl writer dot header le now everything else should just continue to work here if we did this right uh, instead though we have a problem a problem where we're shadowing so we'll fix that so we'll do everywhere we use this we need to WW, WL writer given our type of writer. This will probably have to get improved later where we'll probably make a function to construct this thing. In fact, we should just do that now. So we're going to call this writer without the WL in front of it, and then we're going to have a function writer that takes in a existing writer and returns a writer with type of inner which just kind of does this dun, 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 dun. okay then now all of these places were called wlw writer type of writer this gets replaced with uh, WLW. Uh, fuck, fuck. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This thing gets replaced with uh, WLW writer. Writer. I think I should do it. We're close. Uh, undeclared use of stood. And written string lang. So this stuff probably ends up over here as well. Undeclared identifier built in. We're slowly working our way over. Uh, round up also missing. And writer gets fucking shadow. Right, that makes sense. Uh, so maybe, oh god, okay, it's fine, it's fine. We'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. I think it's used in multiple places, so we're gonna just kind of duplicate it for now. That's fine. We will clean it up later. We will say fix me. Dupe. And then here we need this can't be that. It needs to be W. Boom. W, 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 W. Boom. Okay, right is not marked pub on our little structure here. It's fine. We'll fix that. And uh, op is not pu marked pub, so const op, we just need to make all of these public, I guess, which is a little weird, but I guess it makes sense. Uh, then any, where the fuck we're using this, get the fuck out of here. Uh, okay, expect to type this found something else, Jesus. So get top level. He is calling writer any type, which is a generic writer. Okay. So we're calling get top level writer. He's got a generic writer. We're calling WLW writer with a generic writer. So this should be. Oh. Oops. Oops. Uh. Expected type thing <laughs> found this 
So found IO generic writer. Oh, here I guess we could just do, um, fuck. Fuck, fuck, what just happened? Zoom in, please. I guess here we don't need to re-specify the type. We can just do this. Okay, everything is back to working again. So it looks like we're kind of chilling. Looks like we're kind of chilling. And so now we kind of have this library that we can use in order to generate our code. So can we make like tools and edit tools, uh, like WL gen, we'll call it. Okay. And here we are going to have to like parse some XML. So I actually don't think, I, I don't like splitting this stuff into the tools jitter actually, because it makes it hard to include like resources. Um, and when we were working on a recent project, our map, maps, we actually had to write an XML parser um, because we were parsing the, uh, we were parsing uh, open street maps data. Now this XML parser was written fairly generically and is built off of libxpat. So I'd like to probably start here and just kind of see what this looks like. Uh, we probably also need a Rayland protocol definition to work from. So let's kind of yoink one of these. Yoinkies, yoinkies. And let's just kind of do a little curl, curl this bad boy. Okay. So now, let us kind of add to our build script uh, this executable for now. For It'll get hooked to the build later, maybe, probably. We'll call this uh, WLGen, and this comes from WLGen, and we install WLGen. Okay, so now what I have to do here is do a little, you know, hello world to make sure everybody is happy. Uh, hello world, and uh, let's just start there. So this is going to be called uh, WLGen. WL gen baby. Uh, let's change the title to generating zig from XML. LOL. What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> a nice little, nice little obvious thing. And our, we got a hello world. Big win for us. Okay. Let's try making an XML parser. So I don't really remember what it looks like. Uh, we probably have a function in it on our parser. Okay, so we just call in it with an allocator and some callbacks. Where callbacks is things that happens on start and end of elements. Wow, look at that. That's like super generic. Look at us go. Look at us go. So for now, um, I guess we will do, uh, you know, something that's just like our context, I guess for now, is going to be a null pointer. And then start element, we are going to maybe like log elem. And uh, end element is going to be null. Not null, we can't do null, but like do nothing, I guess we'll call it. <laughs> okay, uh, so we're going to take these function pointers that we need and we're going to use them to create our functions. So we have function one of log elem. And then we have function two of do nothing. Okay, so do nothing is pretty clearly gonna look like this, right? But log lm, we're going to say that we came from an XML parser here. And we're just gonna say stood debug log got lm, and then we'll maybe say with the name. Okay, and we ignore the context and we ignore the actors. Wow, look at this go. Okay, we need an allocator, so we're gonna do our typical uh, general purpose allocator is from the std heap general purpose allocator with I don't give a fuck config options. Defer GPA D init, this returns a thing, I ignore it. We ignore it. 
then we get the generic interface. And this almost certainly will not build anymore because it is going to depend on uh, lib xpad. So here he used to use c.zig. Let's just say that this is going to instead do a c import. And uh, we will look at, I think it's like c include xpad or something. xpad is this like streaming XML parser that we are going to have to figure out how to use again. But the idea is that like it doesn't it doesn't build you like a tree of things that you can parse. It builds you it like as it walks the XML, will tell you what it sees. So it'll be like, oh, I'm at indent level four and I have this element name. Um, and so then we like set up callbacks that are on entry and exit of a certain tag, and we should be able to construct a tree if we want out of that. Um, let's add expat here. I think it's expat, not lib expat, but we can check the next OS package search. Expat. Uh, yeah, expat. Boom. And we'll see where it goes. We will see where it goes. I guess when I said earlier that we wrote an XML parser, I feel like that was kind of like a like a uh, deceptive, right? We we wrapped an XML parsing library ourselves. That feels more correct. Uh, okay, so in our build script, we surely have to link against this thing, right? So do we need wlgen link system library expat. And then hopefully everybody's just kind of happy again. Right, we like it when our friends are happy, our friends being the compiler. Um, we also need to link against libc because expat uses libc for things like malloc, for example, or probably reading files as well. Um, he is mad that the error union is ignored now, so we're getting a little closer. And then he is mad that the, it's not std debug log, it's std debug print. I knew that. I was testing you guys. And the value of XML parser is ignored, so we're going to say const parser, see all this, and I think we're supposed to call like parser.run after or something. Feed, we feed it data as we get it, I see. So we're in charge of reading the data. So at this point, nothing should happen. Absolutely nothing should happen. Which makes sense. I guess we do need to defer parser dnit, which I don't know if this takes in this takes in by pointer, so we have to make him var, not const pointer. Okay. Now let's um feed him the data. So we're gonna be like, yo. Uh open. Is there a way to get like my current source file path in Zig? Probably not. I probably don't even want that. Um, I guess we'll do like std POSIX arg. Do I not have like process args alloc? I guess we call. I guess. That feels fine to me. And then we will be like, uh, the file path, uh, Wayland proto path is equal to args one. Okay. And we will do a std fs current working directory open file of the Wayland proto path with I don't give a fuck arguments. Wayland file is proto file, I guess we'll call this. You know, eventually we'll have to close this file. Right? Certainly. But this probably has to be tried. All right. And then what? Then what? We, like, feed the parser with this thing. So, I guess we do, like, Wayland protofile read to end alloc. We say, hey, if you're, like, a gig... We have a fucking problem. <laughs> but otherwise, just fucking run it. Data, we'll call it. And then we will feed this thing with Wayland Proto data. And hopefully our callback gets called now. Hopefully. Um, he's mad because probably our args had to be tried because there's an allocation involved. And then he is mad probably again because an allocator almost certainly has to be processed past here. Yes, he does. 
Yes, he does. And then here he's mad because I need to feed this with a successful read of data, not an unsuccessful read of data. And then we have to, you know, say, fine, I'll read some stuff. Uh, so we did not specify the path to the Wayland protocol call. And now we can see, look, we have read some stuff. Wonderful. Wonderful. And now the trick is to do something with it, something interesting. So I guess what we probably want to do is double check that output a little bit. So I assume that like the first thing that we get is going to be the first tag, right? So we get protocol, copyright, interface, right? And we get protocol, copyright, interface. Now something that we don't really keep track of here is the indent level. And I guess that is because we should keep track of the indent level ourselves is kind of the API of this thing, right? We have, we have ex enter and exit. Um, and so maybe we're going to do something like we're going to have some sort of like a proto parser, right? And we will use this as the context of this. So, and we will be like, um, let me think for a second. So on enter, I guess we'll call it, right? And he's going to call it like it's context, any opaque name const you eight atters is a XML parser, XML atterator. Okay. And then we have on exit. And for now, let's not get crazy. Let's just store our indent level. Right. So we'll say indent is a U32 equals zero maybe even a U8, right? How far, how, how nested could we possibly get? He asks. Um, now we're gonna say, uh, const self is a proto parser is equal to pointer cast align cast context, right? And then everything else we can do normal shit. So here on exit, we're just gonna be like, yo, uh, self indent minus equals one easy, right? And on enter, we're going to be like self indent plus equals one. And then we are going to log, maybe we're not, we won't even say god lm, we're just going to say like uh, stood debug print a tab for the level of indents. Right? Boom, 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 boom. which is a stupid way of doing this, I know, but you know, we can do whatever we want here because uh, you know, we can. And I guess probably we actually want to do this like minus one, probably, okay. Now this stuff goes away and our parser callbacks now are gonna be like, yo, we're gonna take in our parser here, which doesn't exist yet. And it should actually be our like proto parser, I guess. So var proto parser is a proto parser who needs no no arguments and we'll have a proto parser dot on enter and proto parser on exit. Wow, look at us go. He is mad because nobody's using atters, that's fair. We will have to look at these eventually, but we don't not right now. And I guess maybe it's possible that on exit doesn't have atters. Also, I think we might have copy pasted the wrong function here. Uh, yes, I think we did. So on exit is supposed to be just name. Just name. Uh, okay, so there we go. Now we have like a little tree, a little tree of shit. Now, now what? Now what? I guess as we process this thing, we are going to try to look at interfaces, right? So I guess we are going to have some sort of like interface builder. Right, and he's gonna have like a you know cont builder is some struct as well, and our interfaces are gonna be like he's gonna have a name, right? So name. Uh, we have to be careful here. I don't remember on this XML parser what the ownership rules are, so because we're going to be like, hey, I have attributes, 
And these attributes come from somewhere here. So this guy comes from, where do we create this? Here. So we have atters that come in as our callback from XML parser. So here he calls set element handler. And can we look at like, wait, was that the right thing? Uh, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, set element handler. Okay, so this is called for an encoding that is known to the parser. The encoding handler data argument is that which was passed to the second argument of this. The name argument gives the name of the encoding as specified in the encoding definition. If the callback can provide the for blah, blah, blah. But like, how do I know? Uh, how do I know? It, what the ownership of this name and address is. I, I'm assuming that it is uh, forgetful. I'm assuming it's forgetful and we have to keep track of it ourselves, but I don't remember. So can we look at what we did in our maps application? Uh, it was called like make site or something. So here, I guess we only we never stored any of the data here. Oh yeah, we did. We did. Right, we pushed them into some string table that we would use later. I remember. I remember. Okay, so I think it's reasonable to assume. Reasonable to assume to some extent that we should copy these attributes out if we are using them. That makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. Okay. And so this stuff will have like own shit in it. That's fine. That's fine. Um, and okay. So our interface is gonna have a name and a version. Okay. And is that all that he has? Name and version, okay. Cool. And then he's gonna have requests and events. So this is gonna be like a std array list of requests, right? And, you know, events. Do you like Ziggler of Rust? Uh, right now I'm enjoying it, writing it more. Whatever that means, you know? All right. Now, oh, this needs to write struct, I'm a dumbass, okay. Now, what is going to happen? So when we first encounter an interface, we are going to have to specify, we are gonna to have to like inject the name and the version here. So we're gonna go like, um, for atters, is atters, is it like while atters next probably? Yeah, there we go, while atters next, we're gonna get some attribute. And presumably this thing has like a key, nice. So we're gonna be like, yo, if this key is equal to name, so std mem equal u8 atter key name, we are going to stash that shit somewhere. So I guess we're gonna have like a uh, var name. No, hold on, hold on a sec. So this is only going to be if the name was interface. So this is gonna be like, yo, name interface. And in reality, we're probably gonna actually want this to be like a like enum here. So we're gonna have, have like um, names, I guess, name, right? And we're gonna have like our options of like, Interface, what we care about, uh, event, and request. Right, those are some things that we care about. What else do we care about? We care about lots of stuff here, but maybe only in certain contexts. Right, I guess we kind of care about like interface in the context of the top level parse. 
or protocol in the level of, like we're kind of expecting like a we're kind of like expecting to have some form of tree i guess right so we're kind of the only thing that we're really expecting at the top level is like protocol i guess we're kind of like a state machine huh we're kind of a state machine where like we have the state of uh top level and then we have if we're in protocol right then we have in protocol if we're in interface and as we like kind of bounce around between elements we're going to be like interface this is going to go to pr protocol when we finish the interface and then we're going to see another interface tag go back into the interface section that's kind of what this is going to look like so we're going to have like a state and this is going to be like a union enum backed right and he's going to be like yo we have top no state then we have protocol protocol is a uh, What's he going to have then? I guess at the protocol level, we are going to try to keep track of our scene interfaces. So it could be that this is just an enum because we're going to, we're going to have state kind of like continually there. And I guess at the top level, we are going to have like a stood array list. Yeah, this feels right. Of interfaces, right? Maybe unmanaged, probably unmanaged. Okay, then we just here we have top protocol uh, interface. And then from interface, within an interface, we have description. And I guess here we probably want to specify like protocol description or interface description are different states because um, when you see the end, depending on which of these states you're in, you're going to go back to somewhere else, right? So if you're in interface description, you go to interface. If you're in protocol description, you go to protocol. Uh, okay. Then we have arcs. Okay, for now. We are going to ignore this for a section for a second and only try to process events and requests um i guess really protocol interface no we don't have protocol sorry we don't have interface interface description we have interface interface description that's correct but then we have um i kind of want to do it this way i want to do it this way and i want to have um No, I don't know what I do. I think I want to do it this way. So we have event, event description, event arg, and we just have the same thing duplicated for request. Okay. All right. We'll kind of see how this how this feels. We'll see how this feels. So. We are going to switch on our state and we're going to do just different things based off of what state we're in, I guess. Right? So if we are in the top state, we're basically just going to assert that uh, our name is going to be protocol. We don't support anything else here. That seems fine to me. Fine. Okay, what else? So if we are an interface, we are going to expect one of these things. So I guess we are going to have like tags. I'm going to call it. And maybe we are going to like parse this thing into a tag where we have like arg right that's one thing we have description we have we have request description arg event it's kind of like about it and maybe even here we can get a little bit more granular we can say that an interface tag is has request an event right and then we can say uh like Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so here we have this, and then we have um, the protocol. Protocol tag, or sorry, interface. Yeah, protocol tag, no. Protocol, we only, what are, on protocol, are we only looking for interfaces? Uh, looks kind of like it, sure. And copyright, but fuck copyright. So, we're going to have, like, const protocol. I guess protocol tag, we don't have to do anything special. I guess none of these we do. I don't know, we'll see. So, we're at the protocol level. We basically only want to see uh, interface. So, if uh, we see the name interface... Yes, fuck, copyright, perfect, perfect. Uh, we move into this interface state. And otherwise, we'll just maybe warn. And we'll say unknown or unhandled protocol child this. That seems reasonable to me. That seems reasonable to me. Okay, can we just do like else? Uh, panic. Unimplemented. I'll we'll just kind of see where we end up here. I kind of want to. Kind of want to start humming and hawing. Proto parser is missing interfaces, so here we will do. This is empty initially, which is, means that everything will just work. Missing field state. And we'll just say our initial state is equal to top. Okay. So we print copyright and then we immediately hit unreachable. Because we do not see a protocol. Because we're, when we see top, we see protocol. We need to self state is equal to a protocol after. Okay, so now we get to description, and we see an uh, unimplemented description thing. Okay, so let's do that. So if we are in the description state, we should call this not just... Uh, wait, hold on. There is no description state. If we are in the protocol state... Oh, uh, interface state. That's where we are. If we see description, we're going to be like, hey. We're going to stay like stood meta enum from string to enum. And we're going to create a protocol interface tag. Here we go. From the name, right? And if we don't get one, we'll kind of log and say unknown interface child. And then can we do like break block here? Seems reasonable to me. But he actually doesn't like that. I kind of thought he would. But we can do it here, I guess. He should be fine with it here. Okay. Cool. So then we have the tag. And we switch on the tag. Right, and if we see whatever our options are here, we have to do something with them. So, presumably, we are going to have to like take this thing. It, we're gonna get a description, and this is gonna like go into something, right? Which kind of means that I kind of feel like we should have like a interface builder that we're at. like in flight interface, I guess, I kind of call this, like uh, unfinished interface, right? That's kind of how I feel like this should go. And then when we see the description on this thing, we, are, we have to like put that in there, right? 
that's kind of what it look how it feels to me at this point. So in Wayland XML, when we get the interface, we're going to have to populate this. We're going to have to populate this. So we see we see interface. Um, and so in this case, you say self on finished interface is equal to a new builder. And he has to get the name out of this and the version. Did we do that anywhere yet? This is kind of like it was here. Right, so we're going to iterate over all the attributes here. Let's kind of first start by saying that this can be initialized kind of default constructed. I think that will make our lives easier in some ways. And then somewhere, 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 we do this as well. We say, yo, you, this guy's, this guy's got no, no bitches. Um, so we are going to basically have to stash the name. Right, so we're going to be like, hey, we have no name yet. And we have no version. Right? And as we iterate these things, we are going to have to find them and then do something like uh, stood. We're going to have to stash an allocator. We've been kind of avoiding this. But we do need one. We do need one. So let's kind of get that in here. Interesting. I've written a lot of these things before, and it's weird how your thought process is so different than mine. I will say that my thought process is like barely. Like, I kind of am just doing whatever the next thing that is in front of me says, and uh, just kind of like ripping through it. Did you manage to find an explanation for why the request for WL registry bind doesn't match the XML definition? Yes. Um, someone, I can't remember his name, it starts with a capital C and then ends with a bunch of numbers, linked me the official Wayland specification. And here, they actually talk about it. They say the new ID object is preceded by a string specifying the interface name and unit specifying the version if the interface is not specified. Um, yeah, so somebody, somebody found the real answer there, which was nice. Which was nice. Um, okay. So I guess here we're going to be like... Uh, we have a name, which means that the, the name opt now has to be set to atter dot val but we have to copy this thing so we have a self alloc dupe u8 this boom uh which means here uh we probably need like an error defer uh that says like if name opt alloc free n or something Right? Because, uh, oh, I guess this is get allocated. Right? Because if we allocate this thing, then fail out later, we're going to have a fucking problem. Although, I don't think there's anywhere that could be, like, actually come up. But, you know, you know, whatever. Oh, it will, actually. Because here we're going to do, uh, version is equal to try std, uh, format parse int of the version. So, atter dot val. Uh, we need to say that we are parsing this to u32. Okay, and that the base is 10. Boom. And this is going to be tried. So now, down here, we can be like, yo, name is equal to name opt or else return error no interface name. That's a fucking error. And version is going to be version opt version opt for optional or else return no version no interface version okay so what's in the builder now that we haven't tackled yet description and requests and events but these come later right so really we could we could say that we have to initialize these except it would be nice to be able to have like one of these things that's in an invalid state it is still a bit weird that you have to specify both the numeric name and the string name yeah a little weird but we'll live uh okay 
so I don't really know what has happened here, really. We have just, I guess, constructed this unfinished interface builder, which means that now when we get a description, we can do something with that description, right? We can say self unfinished built interface description is equal to a try. Um, <sighs> ooh. I actually don't know what happens here. I don't know what happens here. Do we have the ability to like look at the content of what is in this when we get in here? Like how does how does that work? Um, Cause I think that we didn't have just like kind of random string data sitting around here when we did this last time. So when we get a callback, we have a name and atters. Um, yeah, so how do I like extract uh, lib expat examples? Like presumably when I see a certain name, I might, might want to be like, give me the fucking content of this tag. You get a text node callback. Uh, text. <laughs> callback. Callback. Uh, okay. So we have... What does our fucking API do now? He registers this like start element thing with set element handler. Okay, so there's something something handler. Uh, I'm just gonna look at the examples again. <laughs> Cause surely in here he has start element, and element sets element handler. Okay, but like, what about like, what's like a declaration here? Handle element declaration, dump content model. Um, is there like lib expat docs? Or is like decal something that I'm supposed to know what that means? Like is declaration the internals here? Lib, expat, um, XML. Okay, what is like, we'll ask the idiot. Uh, in XML, what is the name of the stuff between tags? Like the normal text. <laughs> Element content. I think it's called a character data handler. Uh, yeah, that looks promising, huh? Start and character. Yeah, that must be, right? I'm down to try it. I'm down to try it, and we'll see. We can always, we can always, you know, come back. So, we are going to, oopsies, set character data handler, oops. Uh, and he takes in just the handler. So here we will say function uh, car data. And he takes in a user data and something else that I lost. But we'll find it. It's probably just data, right? Probably. And for now, we will just print that stuff. So we'll say uh, std std debug print data. So we'll say got some data smiley smile. And then we should be able to be like, yo, I would like to set some character data handler. First time I see you using AI, dude, he's a fucking idiot though. I only use it for like, uh, when I'm lost as shit, he can sometimes like tell me that something exists that I didn't know. I do not use him for like normal stuff. Uh, okay, so he also has a C ants taken. So let's just read the fucking, read the source code again or the, the header, I guess I should say. 
set char data handler, which takes in one of these, which takes in a length as well. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and then was that supposed to be null terminated? Uh, S is not null terminated. Oh, sick. So uh, this is data zero land like this. Boom. Uh, so he's mad still because he expected that thing found that thing. So I, he's it's C int here. And then here we have to int cast this. Sometimes it can also tell you about things that don't exist. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so it looks like this is what I was looking for. And so it also looks like it is not necessarily... Um, like it's 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 got some internal buffer size that it's using oh that's okay so we're gonna have to create like a zig style callback for this thing we'll just call this like car data and i guess this will stay still take in our context that makes sense and here we'll take in like the data like this i guess seems reasonable to me seems reasonable to me. and then we will kind of do the same thing that we were doing here where we do some sort of cast to a thing, I don't really know, uh, then we are going to call car data with uh, data zero to length. Boom. And if they fail, we stop the parser and we set our inner error. That seems reasonable to me. Okay, and now we can go to the outside world and say we have some char data. On char data. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Cast len? Uh, probably, yeah. Probably. I'll jump there in a second. <laughs> Compiler will tell me. Uh, okay, so here, what are we going to do? I guess we're going to like switch on our self state, right? And if we're in the description state, we are going to basically append that data to our existing description. And since it does not come in in one shot, that means that our our like builder has to hold the description as a std array list unmanaged of UAs, right? Because it's going to like basically push stuff into this as we go. And then at some point we're going to say, okay, we're done. Turn this into a normal interface. Uh, which means here we're just going to be like self unfinished interface description dot append slice of data and in any other case we'll just be like uh stood log worn on uh, char data in this state on handled yeah sure that seems reasonable <laughs> and then we pass in like uh what is it it's like enum it's like a tag name yeah and it's self dot state. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. No field name description at one twenty seven. So he doesn't like that. Is it interface description? Yeah, it is. There we go. Uh, okay. Expected two arguments to a pen slice. That's true. And that len thing at uh. 132. Uh-huh. Okay, so in protocol state, char data in protocol state unhandled. So this is all related to copyright, right? So uh, we will just say if in protocol state, uh, we do nothing. We kind of know that there is kind of a thing that can happen there. So now we have car data in interface state, which is kind of surprising to me. I guess we're not correctly handling like exit of this, right? So probably what happens is, uh, actually let's run it again. Let's just take a look. So we go protocol copyright, on held protocol child copyright. That's fine. Interface. Then we say car data in interface state unhandled. Then we get description. So what is happening there? Something about this doesn't seem right to me. Right, because we should immediately go into description.
New lines? Oh. New lines are char data? That does sound likely, huh? That's a good point. That is a good point. So maybe we just don't log on fail. Like, we just don't log this. Right? We just say, like, we don't give a fuck. Maybe that is the play for now. Uh, okay. So we're looking pretty good. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure I just noticed that we are never exiting states. So here we have to switch on self-state, right? And basically, depending on which state we're in, we're going to go up a level somewhere. So here, I'm assuming that this, like, a top exit shouldn't happen. So here, we can probably stood debug. Oh, this should happen, I guess, at the end. So I guess this just means that we're finished. So top, we can just do nothing. Protocol, if we exit protocol. Uh, no, top, we should never exit. So this should be a std, uh, std debug assert false. Protocol should be, we should go to top. Interface, we should go to protocol. Interface description. We should go to interface. Request. We should go to interface. Right? I think request description, we go to request. I think. Same with this one. Then event, we go back to interface. And then for both of these, we go back to event. I think. That feels right to me. I don't really know, but it feels right. Uh, okay, so we got unreachable here. At assert name protocol. Interesting. So I, it would be kind of interesting to know where we are in the file. This is also happening right off rip. Right, we're like getting into interface, and can we like maybe log what we're leaving? Uh, cause that feels like it's useful information. Uh, so we are leaving copyright. Uh, oh. Oof. So because we didn't enter the copyright section, we also didn't leave the copyright section. So maybe we should have a function that's like known tag here. Maybe. Is known tag. Right? And that way we can kind of guard this down here on exit. So we can say like, if it is not a known tag, uh, we return. Otherwise, we do something interesting, right? And then we also will do this same thing on the beginning of on enter. We'll kind of just fucking like rip this shit here. And I guess here we also want self indent minus equals one while we're here. While we're printing, we might as well. Um, And then here we just need to kind of say uh is the easiest way to do this to make an enum of names no uh maybe we do uh like this did i miss the fun part with zikram as well it's ongoing yeah we're we're in it we're in the we're in the weeds so we know we have a uh, protocol Hard. Is this how I want to do it? Because it seems like like the you should kind of have a known args for a given state is probably the correct thing to do here. Right? We only enter this stuff. We only like do the checks depending on our existing state. Um it kind of makes more sense. Maybe to do something like this, 
where we have like an unknown part and we keep track of like the unknown level or something. Is that easier? Or like kind of like more robust? No, because you need to track who who your parent was too. So you'd have like unknown level. Right? And you'd have like unknown parent. Maybe? Right, so then you have like here, like on stage, do this. That seems maybe okay. That seems nicer than this is known tag shit. So here. I guess we have to have like an else block in all of these things. Right? So we have unknown, unhandled protocol child name. Instead, we'll say a self, and then we'll, we'll set the state to unknown. And the unknown level to one, to will be incremented by one. I guess this will be equal to one because we, we know that we are in here. Then on, if we are in unknown state, so if we are in unknown state, we basically have to increase our unknown level every time we enter something, right? And every time we exit something, we decrease unknown level. Right, so we go uh, self unknown level minus equals one, oopsies. And then we say if self unknown level is equal to zero, we set our state back to the unknown parent. Okay, that doesn't seem crazy to me. That doesn't seem crazy to me. Uh, so he's missing a field unknown level. So this just has to start zero. That's fine. Unknown parent is going to just go like top or something. This also doesn't matter. Um, and then we immediately get to here where we see protocol. We get back to top somehow. Did I forget to set the unknown parent? I did, I did. We have to set this uh, an unknown parent here to uh, protocol. Uh, that feels like it got farther, right? So we got into copyright, then interface. It'd be nice to write down like kind of what state we are in when we see this thing as well. So can we do this? We see like this in this state. Uh, yeah, so we're at protocol top. We see copyright protocol. We say interface at protocol. Uh, then description and interface. And then when we leave description, we are not correctly going back. So interface description is supposed to go to interface when we exit. And I wonder why he is not. Right, how did this happen? How did this happen? So when we saw description, oh, we didn't do anything. We have to do this. Uh, and then I guess what we should do here is we have to we have to do the same like trick here yeah 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 okay so description we don't do anything but request an event we probably do have to do things um so actually i think it's probably easier for now to just not have these as something that we can do and then we should be able to like run through the whole file still Uh, yeah, it looks like. That looks pretty good so far. Pretty good. We are getting to the end of the file, and then we are leaking. So I think we're doing an okay job here. We're at least making it through the whole file. Now, there are we are kind of deep in some unknowns in some cases, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay, so if we are in the interface description state, 
Oh no, we're panicking somewhere, right? Are we not? Shouldn't we be panicking here? I mean, we're not. We're getting to the end, so I, I must not understand. Oh, because we're never we're never inter increment entering some state that we shouldn't. Well, we're entering into interface description. Oh, but that is handled. It's just not handled here. It's handled here. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. So we should be seeing. Let's let's push. Whoa. Hello. Bun plus plus. Thank you for the five gifties. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Um, okay. So if on each of these each of these elements, we have like a finish that returns an interface, right? Uh, which takes in our builder. Um, we should be able to be like, okay, so we have an interface and our interface has, all he has right now, I guess, is a description. Because we, we aren't doing, well, he has a name, I guess, that's true. He has a version. And a description. He will eventually have requests and events, but he doesn't have those right now. Not yet. Not yet, at least. So this is going to be like return. I guess this can fail because it does need to reallocate. So this does not have to be freed in any way, shape, or form. Version, this is fine. And uh, I think new self or description description is equal self description to owned slice boom 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 okay seems reasonable to me and then we are going to just push this to our list of interfaces on exit we are going to get like an interface exit right boom and we're going to be like yo it's time so we're going to be like self uh, interfaces append self unfinished interface built finish there's a double try here boom seems reasonable to me seems reasonable to me and so at the end of this uh, we should be able to just look at all our interfaces now we probably should also handle I think on finish here we need to clear out our state so I just want to be like a uh, self name is equal to nothing. Can we just do like self builder is equal to nothing here at the end? Yeah, reset ourselves on finish. Cause that means that when we, if we like uh, free our protocol parser, right? Now we can do like self builder D in it and that should be like fine. Or unknown, uh, un is, is it not builder? It's uh, unfinished interface. I don't know why he doesn't like that, but that's fine. And then we are also going to have to like look at our interfaces for so for self interfaces. We're going to be like uh, interface to unit. Then we're going to say self interfaces to unit like this, right? Something like this. Presumably this has taken our allocator as well. Is there anything else in here? Uh, no, that's most of it. Okay, so interface is going to have a function to unit, which I guess is going to be like here. I don't know, maybe here. Uh, 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 uh. Sure. And an allocator. He's going to free the string. And the description. And then we're going to have something similar on the builder. Boom, boom, boom. But it's going to be self description d in it alec and requests and events uh yeah that seems fine so then we just have to uh defer proto parser d in it and hopefully our fucking leaky messages stop now
Um, he's mad because self interfaces is a not something that I can iterate. I have to do items here. Items, items, items. Uh, and then append needs is unmanaged, so he needs like self alloc here. And then presumably this also needs an allocator here, which means it needs an allocator kind of like here. Which means that this guy needs to pass in self alloc here as well. Very off topic, but I'm in Vancouver right now. Anything I definitely shouldn't miss out while I'm here. Uh, I'm not very good at this stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, what I just like, I mean, obviously the beaches are nice right now, right? So I would check those out. Um, people really like hiking in this area. So like all of the mountains up north. Uh, there's like stuff to do there. People will go out to like, uh, what's it called? Squamish and do hikes there. Um, I don't know how willing you're far you're willing to drive, but Whistler is pretty cool depending on what you're into. But other than that, I don't really know. Other than that, I don't really know. And I wouldn't trust my advice on this at all because I don't really do stuff. <laughs> East Hastings, LL. Yeah, yeah. Send them, send them at the uh, the shit sidewalks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess here we just do self dot star is equal to that. That makes sense. Uh, so we're getting a lot closer. We are missing. We still have one leaky, which is coming from our Wayland proto data, which is this. So we need to do a little uh, Alec free on this and no all right we got through all of it and we do not have any leaky so now once we've run the whole parser we should be able to like see some interesting we should be able to like at least list the interfaces right so we should be able to go like for parser interface uh what oh proto parser interfaces Should I continue with Rust or convert to Zig? Whichever you feel like. Continuing on with Rust is great. There is no reason to stop if you were un if you are not unhappy with it. They both can accomplish all of the same things, and I don't think language really matters that much at this level, right? It doesn't like in the level of like Python or JavaScript or C. Those are all like very different and have like different applications, or like Go or Java, you know, or like another class. But, like within C, Zig, Rust, it's like whichever thing is like working for you. I think just keep. Doing. Now, I would I would recommend using Zig. It is very fun. I do not. I think that it is like very freeing compared to Rust in a lot of ways. Um, and I, but I do not think. I do not think that uh, when I wrote, wrote Rust for the first time, it like changed the way I wrote code a lot. And I don't think Zig has that same effect on me. Um, but. I was tired of the restrictions of Rust in some ways, and so it's kind of nice to not have to deal with those anymore. Uh, okay. So let's say we have an interface here. So we're gonna say, here are all of our interfaces, and let's kind of log their descriptions as well, you know? And let's just kind of see how that feels. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty fucking sick. That's definitely doing what we want, right? So we have... I don't know why we have, like, indents here. Maybe if we throw a little new line at this, that will fix itself. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good, right? Right, that looks pretty good. So we have, well, W display, a core object, W registry, this. So we, we are starting to collect the information we need. We are starting. Um, match is one of the best parts of Rust, Rust for sure. Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, Zig has like a, a pretty good equivalent, and I feel like C af after I understand the Zig equivalent, C has the equivalent thing. Just you have to write it by hand. But like the idea of like turning a string into an enum and then switching on that is like, oh, it's kind of like almost the same. <laughs> uh, okay. So now I guess. 
what are we going to do when we see like a request? What are we going to do when we see a request? Well, presumably we are going to have some sort of like unfinished request as well, right? And so this is gonna be like an interface request builder. And I guess really this kind of goes like inside the interface builder kind of is where this belongs probably, right? So here we'll have like const builder here as well. And uh, then what? I guess that means on D in it, we're certainly gonna have to D in it that thing. Well, I guess we don't really know what is in a request right now. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. So our quest is going to have a description and many arcs. Okay. So the args are going to kind of be of type arg, probably, right? And we're gonna have like an arg here. And the arg is going to have a name and a type, whose type is probably string here. I guess we could probably make the type an enum if we know all the types in advance. Right, like the types are well-defined in the like Wayland core thing here. So we probably just fucking rip them. Yeah, we probably slap them into a enum. I think that is what we do. So we'll say arg type. Okay. Uh, I don't know where I want this to go, maybe here. And we'll call this a type. Or maybe we just put the enum directly in here. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, <clears throat> okay, int, you int, fixed, string, object, new ID array, FD. These are our options. These are our options. Is the window on the right middle using breakcasting? No, it's uh, <laughs> it's using Godot and then uh, using a bunch of post processing to make it look like shit. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is going to have a bunch of args, and so our builder is going to have the equivalent thing again, right? He's going to have like std array list of u8s. And the arg is going to be a stutter list of args. Boom. Super, super chillin'. All right. So, if we are in the request state, we have to go into the uh, request state. So, self state is equal to request. And then if we are in is there anything we like have to do here we have to like set the builder request so first of all when we leave the request state we have to commit we have to commit the the unfinished request here right so we have to go like self unfinished interface requests append and here we have to com append something self unfinished interface dot unfinished request dot finish something like this right it's going to look something like this okay so now we have to implement this finish thing on filter which is going to return a request and this is should be pretty straightforward Uh, should be. It's just take the two or two vectors and turn them into arrays. How is this an ambiguous re reference? We'll just do this instead. Fuck it. Oh, because there's a builder available at this level. Sure. Okay. Uh, so we're just gonna do uh, defer self is equal to nothing again. 
right? And then uh, return description equals self description to own slice and args is self args to own slice. Although I do believe that we don't need that defer at the top here because these things will all fix themselves. So I guess we'll kind of do it this way. And then this needs a little dot here and this needs to be able to fail. And these guys need to take an allocators. Okay, then whoever called this, I think we're chilling here. I guess we probably need to try up here. And all right. I actually think, hold on. Args are single, like single tag things. Um, but I don't really know if these are going to like enter and exit properly. So we'll see. We'll see. We might not need state for arg. We might not, but we will see. Okay. So if we were in the request state, we have to do some shit, right? Surely. So if we are in the request state and we see, I guess here we're going to look for arg or description. So we're going to be like, Uh, it's going to look a lot like this. Uh, we're, we're going to use a rec event tag. Um, this also needs a block thing here so we can break out of it. And then probably fix me, um, deduplicate unknown state management. I think is going to be important in the future. Uh, this stream is literally my only exposure to Zig. I mean, I hope that it's interesting to you. I, I enjoy, I enjoy running Zig a lot. It feels really, really comfortable. Um, after very little effort, which is very, very nice. Uh, it has like kind of like all the niceties of Rust without all the bullshit. <laughs> so we have description and arg, I think are two options here. My hot take a few years for a few years has been that people should just stop using C and just use C++ language. 100% ignore the C++ standard library. Ignore any advice that tells you to use a CL boost other than my libs. It's so hard though with C++ because it's just like, yeah, I guess most of my issues with it are the STL. I think that is probably the vast majority of it. I just wish that they hadn't gone all in on templates. I wish that the language did more earlier. I guess with like C++ 17 and stuff, like Consexper kind of got to the point where it kind of covers a lot of the cases where templates used to cover, at least for me. I think that the if you try to write a move constructor, you're still going to have issues with like rule of five and stuff. And like that shit's just not fun. I think it's like really oddly hard to write like a correct class in C++, which is like fucking stupid. Right? It's like the it's like the lowest like the thing you want to do. I want to make a container to like wrap some logic. And it's like just doing that correctly is just hard. I guess if you just always delete move constructors, but it's just like there's so much baggage, man. I don't know. I'd rather use C, I think. I'd rather use C because like when you bring you write C and you fuck up, it's your fault. I get so mad when like I mean obviously if you do if you do something wrong in C and fuck up, it's like kind of your fault still. But it's like there's just so much stuff to know compared to C where it's just like it's so straightforward i don't know i don't know i don't think i would if i was going to if i'm like I, w I want more complexity to manage stuff i think i would just go rust like <laughs> like it c plus plus like is so frustrating to me i don't know okay so this is going to go into request description state and this is going to go into request arg state right uh okay so then what <laughs> uh let me think let me think let me think nothing i think right so description i guess arg we are gonna have to append to the args list um but i would like to kind of handle that in a minute so i am just going to do this uh first of all i fucked this up this should say request and i want to kind of say that args are unhandled for now for now we will come back to it. But I'm kind of hoping that 
we should be okay here for the most part. Uh, what are all these leakies from? These are from unfinished interface requests append. So probably it's because our interface, our interfaces do not iterate his requests. Uh, so on dnit, we need to go alloc free or self. Yeah, alloc free self. Oh, we don't ever append this. Uh, so are we never calling like request finish? We're not. Oh, we are. Yes, yeah, so we have unfinished request. Oh, but we never assign those externally. Sure. So we have like four self requests items. Uh, we say item d in it with alloc. And then this thing needs a D in it as well. So an alloc allocator self uh, alloc free self description and we free the args. I don't think the arg the arg itself is actually gonna have something as well. So for self args arg <laughs> uh self or r d in it with our allocator as well all right so that's one more one more one more one more function d in it self is an arg he's going to take in an allocator as well he's going to free the name uh so alloc free name boom 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 Uh, we're getting closer. We forgot something, the general protection. So double free at self or problem with freeing at description in line 140. Uh, right. So this is being called here. He's getting mad at freeing unfinished interface DNIT, uh, which calls item DNIT out free self description. Uh, okay. That's confusing. I feel like that should be fine. Unless I'm freeing them out of order. So here I free... Self-description to own slice. Do I, did I maybe not copy it out when I push? No, I got a pen slice here. What am I missing here? Can we like a uh, GDB? What am I missing? And it's a uh, res, but okay. P self description. Oh, self description is uninitialized memory. Uh, because self, okay, uh, so what's going on here? Oh, I just fucking do, I freed in the wrong order, so I'm a dumbass. I am a dumbass, I was here. Boopies. Boopies. Oopsie daisies. There we go. All right. Closer. We still have a lot of leakies coming out. So end element, we request to unfinished interface. Here. Uh, it was complaining about the one at 251. So that's this. So unfinished interface requests is not getting freed correctly. Because here I do this. So because here we do not properly deinit the request. So we'll just do a self requests d in it for now. Um just for now. Just for now. 
All right. Cool. We fucking got there again. Okay. So can we maybe che check out the requests now? So we should be able to look at each request and get its name and description probably, right? Uh, we do just immediately go into description here, but what about when we enter the request date here? Surely we need to add like, uh, you know, the name of this thing. Does the request not have a name? It must have a name. We must have fucked this up. So the request has to have a name here. It must. Which means that on DNA, we need to free that name. Surely. And let's look at the XML again. So it does seem like the only thing we need to worry about is the name on this thing. What was the thing used to debug? GDB? GDB. GNU debugger bugger. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, something, something. Debugger. Oh, it's the D and bugger are separate words in there. Um, okay. So we just append to, we just take the name. So when we go into the request state, we need to get the name. I would like to call out as well that I, I am very aware that this code is uh, impossible to read, pretty hard to maintain for me in the future. So eventually this will all have to get split out into like small, smaller functions with like sub modules and stuff. And like, you know, maybe you're going to have like an interface, you're going to have like push interface data or something. But you know, like for now we're just doing everything in one spot because we're in prototype mode. We talk about prototype mode a lot where it's like, um, sometimes you just want to see if you can get the thing, right? And eventually like, I'm willing to take as many shortcuts as I need to take to get where I need to go, and then I will clean it up later. So that's kind of, if anybody's watching, you're like, holy shit, your code's bad. It's like, yeah, I know. Don't worry. Don't you worry. You're pretty little ahead about it. Name opt is equal to uh, alloc self alloc dupe. We dupe a u8 string of atter.val. Easy. And then here we say error defer if name opt uh, alloc free name n. n. Yeah. Re n. Free n. There we go. Much better. Much better. And then here, when here we have to set the name, which is simple. Which is simple. We just need to make sure that the builder also has a name field to work with. And on here, we need to alloc free self dot name on the builder as well, probably. Or we just do this. Certainly these builders need a DNN actually. Right, for if um, we exit early. So this is like self. Self name, alloc is free as this. We say self description DNA with Alec and uh, self args DNA with Alec. And I don't think each arg has anything. He does. So we actually have to iterate the args too. Uh, we, what fun. So this means that the top level builder probably has to do like a self unfinished request DNA with an Alec as well. Uh, and at 225, we have to write try. DN and hell. I'm okay with it. I kind of signed up for this. I signed up for this. I'd rather, I think at this point, I would rather D in it hell, as you call it, than fight with Rye. I, I, I feel like, you know, I'm okay with it. 60. He's mad that self name is probably getting double freed here. Uh, and because probably. Here, I forgot to do defer self is equal to this. We need to make sure that we don't de it something that's important later. No, he still doesn't like that. Why not? Why 
not. So on finish, on exit, we are calling interfaces append finish. This is calling item D in it at 98. Oh, oops. Uh, I just forgot that I didn't want to do this anymore, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because we're, we're propagating the name here. So I guess we just don't want to do this. Ooh, that was a stupid little hack. Can we just do this? Does Nick have a way to do some sort of like C++ REI or something like that? Uh, no. And that's an intentional, an intentional choice on their part, if I understand correctly, because it is hidden control flow. Uh, which can be annoying. Which can be annoying. Am I in the right spot here? Uh, here. Here, and then for self-requests. Oh god, what did I just do? Uh, this probably has a star in front of it. Alec free rec, or sorry, rec d in it. Alec, boom, and then Alec free self requests boom that should do it we're getting closer we have got a double free again probably so this is on parser dna rec dna interface dna is it still on name it is i must be doing something fucking stupid here i must be i must be so where is this set Oh, I'm just a dumbass. It's actually an invalid free. We need to dupe this thing. Oh no, we dupe it here. We dupe it here. Oh, fuck. Um, name is, name is overloaded here. So that's why I'm copying the key in from the XML tag um, by mistake, uh, but whatever. Uh, I think you can avoid all freezes by using the XML parse buffer together with XML get buffer, which, which returns stable buffer into a buffer that goes away when you start the XML parser. Ah, whatever. I don't mind. I don't mind. Uh, so here we need to do, like, if... Uh, this is going to be, like, if name opt is equal to null. What do I do in the other cases here? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Name opt or else. Uh, return error no request name. There we go. There we go. We fucking got there. Okay. So now, as we go through interfaces, let's go over each of the requests. And let's print out the request name and the request description. Does he have one? Yep. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So subsurface has destroy, set position, place above, place below, set sync, set desync. We are getting closer. Closer, closer, closer. What is next? What is next? Argument parsing for the requests, probably. Right? Um, so yeah, here we're going to say self state request arg. And before we actually get too crazy here, I just want to see if we actually ever exit, like if this works correct the way I think it will, because I don't know if self closing tags still get like an enter and exit event. It looks like it is still working correctly. Uh, but arg unknown seems crazy. Oh, these are for events. Right, so events we haven't handled yet. Uh, yeah, so it looks like that is correct. That is correct. Um, okay, so all we have to do here is like parse out the pieces of the argument. So what are our arg, our arg thing has a name and a type. Simple. Simple, 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 right? 
So we're going to go through here. We're going to look at um, while atters dot next atter. We are going to look for name. Is that right? Arg has a name type. Name type summary and sometimes interface. Okay. So I guess maybe we'll do like somewhere. Like where are our tag types? Const arg tag. So this is name, interface, type, summary. Um, how do how usually folks solve the problem where you have auto generated code that demands closed resource? I'd assume they just need to be aware of everything that could leak. It's a resource that they didn't handle. Yeah, you just put a doc on it, little doc string, no biggie, or common naming. Uh, you do have a thingy you plus plus for counting the depth of the tree before main dispatcher. Uh, I don't know why you're saying that, but I think I have that. <laughs> uh, okay, so when I am parsing an argument somewhere, where the fuck that is, we're going to go like atter key. We're going to do like const arg tag is equal to a stood meta e string to enum at atter arg tag from the key uh pedantic those are attributes not tags i can call them whatever i want because it's my code base <laughs> uh we'll set, put a log here unhandled arg tag this uh and we'll call it atter dot key boom That's why unknown misplaced your shift depth, depth not correctly. Uh, I didn't really notice a problem, <laughs> but I also might not have been looking very hard. Uh, so now we have to do something with this arg tag. So switch arg tag, presumably, right? We're gonna have like name interface type summary. So I guess here we're gonna have like name is gonna say that name opt is equal to I guess we're going to dupe this thing. Probably. Probably something like this. We're going to have like var name opt is a uh, string equals null with an error defer. Like if name opt n alloc free something like that something like that and what are all their options again what are other options uh we have interface type and summary okay so i guess we just log all this stuff huh i think interface is supposed to be a string here. Mm. You know what I think we're gonna do instead? Uh, we know that we have to behave differently when the interface is passed in, but we don't like, because like when there's no interface, the new ID field uh, requires you to pass the interface in as part of the arguments, but you don't actually need to care what the interface is from this perspective. So probably here, I'm just gonna say uh, has interface. Right? And then here, we will just say like, if we saw that interface field, we'll set has interface to true. Okay. Type, we're gonna have to do something. So probably we, do we copy the, we, we parse the type here. So this gets a uh, std meta string to enum of 
something. Uh, val of the atter val. So this is going to go to arg type. Where the fuck that's fine. Interface arg type. From atter val. And if they doesn't convert, we'll just say a return error unknown type. Okay, okay. Uh, and then if we see summary, we will, I guess, set the summary, which will look a lot like this. All right, and then we have this as well for summary. Okay. And we need type opt here as well. Var type opt is a optional arg, uh, interface arg type. Then at the end of this, we have an argument that we can make out of this shit. Just logged in. What was it about the gene at hell? Oh, just a lot of like, I have like this like super nested allocated structure. And instead of using like uh, arena and stuff, I was just kind of like, you know, there's a lot of dnit functions in what I'm doing right now. Uh, which I don't really mind. It's not the end world. Okay. Self. Unfinished interface. Unfinished request. Jesus Christ. What the fuck did I just type? Arcs. Append. A new argument. Uh, which I guess we'll reuse it with a dot here. Which has these fields. We also need summary. Which means that we also need to free self summary here. Okay. So we have name equal name opt or else return error. No arg name. We have summary equal summary opt or else return error. No arg summary. Uh, I guess that would be totally fine actually. So maybe we'll just do this. In fact, instead of calling this summary opt, you know, we can just call this summary, no optional, and he starts with nothing. And then this becomes a simpler error defer. And there is no more summary opt. We just do this. All right. Uh, what else is in this thing? I already forgot. It must be has interface. And whatever the fuck the other thing was, type. This is required. We cannot generate a function signature if we do not know the type of the function. Okay, let's fucking run it. Not quite there. So incompatible type arg tag and void. Uh, probably because here we need to continue if that's the case. And uh, expected two arguments because they do have to take in the allocator that we're using. We are so close. No file type in arc. Did I call it something else? I called it tip. I called it tip. Uh, okay. So now we have these things and we could probably like start generating the function signatures out of this, right? We could write like function name. Uh, and then we could like do this. Probably we do something that's like, you would do like four line in description, print this line type shit. Uh, I don't really want to do that right now. So instead, um, do I want to make this a function? I guess we want to make it a struct, right? That's what we said. We want to like be struct. Const name is equal to a struct. I guess we'll do like a zig multi-line string here. And the struct is going to have parameters, right? So we're going to go like, I guess this kind of looks like this. Const s equals struct. Probably I think you need to double this thing up. Then we just do rec name here. And we go for rec args. 
we do something that's like we print out the field name followed by the type name like something like this followed by an end brace probably so this is going to be a arg name arg tip and we have to do like a fix me if new to if if uh new id plus not has interface add string plus version okay but we will get there we will get there missing opening thing right so i need to double close this brace as well to escape it and we cannot format arg type here so let's just do a tag name here uh okay and then we need probably a new line at the end of course Uh, that feels pretty good, man. That feels... Can we, like, uh, indent everything one level in here? Just to, so that it lines up a little better. Right, so we have, like, our WL... What's, what's one of the things that we've, like, worked with already? WL display, get registry, registry, new ID. WL registry, bind. New name, new ID. Um... Yeah, that's pretty sick, right? So if we match up with like Wayland protocol here, if we look at like WL display, we have sync and get registry is what we're supposed to have. And we do have sync, sync matches, callback new ID and get registry here. Uh, also matches up, registry has new ID, boom. Uh, Pretty fucking good, pretty fucking good, okay. So I think we're so we're actually like pretty close here. We're pretty close. Um now I think the the we do need to handle events here. Right? Events are kind of like the missing piece. Um but I think I think it makes more sense just so that we have like some success uh within the stream as a whole. Um maybe we do like the code gen of the sender part right now. I think that is probably what we want to do. Because that way, um, we can kind of we can kind of say that the event side is very very similar to the uh, request side, and we can re leave that somewhat as an exercise to the the writer, the an exercise for the writer, i.e., me, right? But I can do that in happy hour without feeling too guilty if we get the rest out now. So let's do that. Uh, let's get add get nor and get commit dash m checkpoint, and let's start fucking running it down. Okay, so well, I guess we we have now a you know it's not like we've been keeping good track of the time up to this point, but at the very least we have something here. So we'll say we are on to uh, what is what is this doing now? Actual code gen. Okay, so for our existing interfaces in main dot zig we have an example here of display, right? So he has a top level structure for the interface, then internal structures for each of the commands along with functions that bind them, right? So for each argument that our thing, our thing, our actual message, oh, I don't think this is the example we wanna follow. Hold on, let's find a better example. This is the example we wanna follow. This is the example we wanna follow. So the thing has an ID inside and he has a, function here that has an id called op and he calls he makes a function associated with that that takes the thing and shoves it into a writer shoves it into a writer so our code gen should look something like uh we'll just kind of copy these imports for now we'll copy these imports for now so we'll do something like Uh, this, okay. And we're gonna say that we have some output, right? Output path. 
we are going to open that file uh, as soon as we can so that we, we early detect any potential problems. Okay. And this is not going to call open file. We're going to call create file, which is kind of a confusing name because this create file also opens an existing file for writing. But, you know, it is what it is. Then we are going to write the beginning of our file. So output file. We, sh we could do a buffered writer, but uh, I don't want to right now. Uh, maybe I'll put a fix me buffer question mark. It might be way faster. Uh, but for now, we will just do the stupid thing. Does it have a write all or do I need the writer? He does have a write all. Sick. All right. So we'll start here. We write this. And then for each interface, we are going to write output file. Um, um, then I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna write. It's gonna be like something along the lines of struct some interface. I guess that's kind of it for now. We're gonna write struct some interface. Right? And then we are going to go iterate over each field for each request. So for each request, we said we were going to have a structure representing the arguments, as well as a function to automatically bind the, to automatically push the structure. I think that's what we said we were going to do. So the structure, this is going to be like output file, write all. Uh, it's probably going to look something like <laughs> struct s again. Wow, look at this go. Uh, but this time needs to be indented. Okay. This has to be tried, certainly. Um, And this is going to have a new line. And this is going to have the rec name this time. Okay. Uh, eventually, we're going to have to write the closing brace. Eventually. And in between that, what are we going to do? We're going to go over each argument. And we are going to basically do this. But this will eventually, we'll have to do some sort of like conversion to a zig string type. So uh, maybe we'll call it, we'll have like a two zig type string. Right? And we'll just do switch self int goes to i32. Uh, u int goes to u32. Fixed goes to maybe. The problem is we haven't actually done all of these yet. The problem is that we haven't done all these yet. So I wonder if it makes sense to like discard function calls that have elements that we don't know how to handle yet. That's probably the easiest way to get around this, right? Because the I, there are some things that we just haven't encountered yet and we don't have to encounter yet. So why would we? Why would we? So I wonder, maybe we just do panic unimplemented, right? Um, okay, int u int string. New ID we've definitely hit. And uh, I don't know if we've hit object yet. Do you want to explain why you're doing code gen? Uh, yeah, because uh, I didn't want to, <laughs> in typical programmer fashion, I didn't want to hand write all of these bindings. And so I'm bringing some code to generate the bindings for me. And uh, it's going to be way harder. <laughs> But uh, my thought was it will it, it will be easier for me to iterate on what I think the interfaces should be. Um, so like, and it'll make it easier for what, like every time I'm trying to experiment with something, the experimentation with the things should go faster if we already have all the interfaces available. So there's like this XML that defines the Wayland protocol. These are basically like uh, rules for how to pack uh, like concepts in code into like a packet that you send to the Wayland comp compositor. And uh, I want to auto-generate it because it just seems nicer. Uh, okay. So I guess what we want to do here is we want to reject 
interfaces that have elements that we don't like. So we're just gonna go for each, uh, for each request, I guess. So if, like, rec has, if rec has unknown type, call it, continue. I think that's reasonable. And I always have to implement where the fuck this thing is. So this is going to come from like an interface request. And do we say if it does? Yes. Yeah, so if it has an unknown type. So we just go over all the arcs. And we look at the arc type. And we just kind of say the ones we care about. So we could even do something like this. Right? And then we could say, like, if uh, we could just look at, like, R tip to zig string, and we could say, uh, if this is equal to null, return false, and then otherwise return true. Uh, other way around, false, sorry, false, true here. And then later, when we actually do the zig type conversion, we can just kind of auto deref because we know that we validated them all already. Um, and then, so we've kind of gone over each of these. This should generate the, the structures. And so we should have a function, function to uh, push structure. So we're not there yet. Also, this structure needs to have a ID associated with them. So this is going to have something that's like a, maybe we'll do a multi-line string here. So we can do like, uh, interface ID is a U32. Something like this. Maybe, maybe like this. And then I guess where we were using tabs before, I wanna use spaces. And then at the end of this, we do have to write out that our, our struct is complete. Uh, write all doesn't take arguments like this, so this should be output file print, which doesn't exist. So we should actually have like a var output writer is an output file writer like this. That will make our lives easier. We'll have a little nice functions to work with. Nice files, nice uh, APIs to work with, sorry. I don't know, my brain's not all the way on anymore. Sometimes it gets like that. Sometimes it gets like that. Sometimes she's born with it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, okay. Can I throw an nasty joke? Uh, I might delete it if I don't like it, but you can try. Uh, this does need to be in a strings. And I guess all these need to write return. All right, let's run it. So he doesn't like this because we have to write an output.zig. Okay. So this looks like shit. So in our write alls, if I put to, if I'm gonna write all, I don't have to escape my shit. Let's run it again. Uh, okay. We're definitely getting closer. We're getting closer. Uh, so here, let's new line. Let's cut, throw some new lines here to try to separate what is broken. We are close, except these struct is not the right. We don't do struct in this language. We do const thing is equal to struct. And then we do kind of put semicolons at the end here. Uh, 
Um, let's check again. So now we have const bool display as we will struct. Uh, we do need a comma after this field here, and we too probably do want some like white space between our shit. Uh, so maybe we'll do it like this for now. Just kind of throw some double new lines in a couple spots to see what happens. Um, it's not too bad. Not too bad. I guess where are my arguments? Where are my arguments, man? Like, where is my ID in here? You know? It's almost like this isn't populated. Somehow. But I thought that we proved- we, we had them before. Oh, we're printing somewhere instead, like fucking idiots. I was kind of wondering where all of those prints were coming from. <laughs> and that explains why you were saying the args go in debug. Uh, okay! That looks like valid zig. That looks like valid zig. Um. Now. Now, now, now. Instead of trying to get too tricky here, I think we can do something along the lines of at the end of each interface, we can just kind of like write out a function uh, that does what I want to. So, of course, at the very end here, we're going to do this. And I wonder if we can do something that's like function uh, send to using self, which is going to be taking in the interface name, probably by const. Which means this is going to be print. And can we do something that's like take this and the uh, opt? And can we just then do like Uh, whatever the fuck we were doing in main here, where we create like a WL writer, like this essentially, right? Oops, wrong way, wrong way. And here we just use params here. And here we take in the interface ID. That feels a lot like, a lot like what I want. So here we need to double escape our curly braces because we are in a print. And then we need to pass in the interface name. <laughs> saying hey Sfei with an F is really funny um okay we're close here we're missing a new line again so we'll do one of you know slap one of these on here oops more like this there we go Um, and then here we forgot to write a return type, so I guess our return type is void. All right. Uh, here we forgot our writer input. Uh, but now this looks like, like, valid zig. This looks like valid zig. So I'd be I would be interested to try kind of replacing our existing code with the generated code a little bit. Where 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 we can, of course. Where we can, of course. So let's start just like replacing compositor with um I'm not gonna hook it up to the build system right now. That's gonna be left as an exercise to the writer. <laughs> I like I like that phrase. I'm gonna start using that. So we'll call this generated is equal to import output zig and let's just try, try replacing the compositor with um output wl or maybe we'll start at the top display we'll call this um output wl display 
with interface ID is equal to one. If I remember correctly. No, uh, so sorry, this is called generated here. Uh, not marked pub, fuck. Okay, hold on, hold on, we, we can fix it, we, we can fix this. Uh, so this needs to be pub. Okay, then all of our functions need to be public as well. And all of our structures, there we go. It isn't like that, oh, that's okay. That is okay, uh, because that is not for the file that we're trying to fix right now. So does this look okay? Uh, put, put const. I wrote put instead of pub because I'm a fucking dumbass. Uh, and then output. Oops. Uh. Do not run it. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So let's kind of slap this guy back over here. Remove the old one and main so now we should be able to kind of see how he's starting to follow it so he says no node field name display id so 367 we'll say interface id here i'll fix that um get registry does not exist anymore but but we do have something else we have we should have something that's like wl uh generated wl display Uh, hello, output zig, wl display. Uh, let's, let's, uh, restart our language server. It doesn't feel like he's doing what I want to do. You know? And he should have a get registry structure. Nice. And he should have a registry is equal to registry, registry ID. Okay. And then we should be able to call generated oops wl display send with this as well as a writer so here we will pass in our writer and we should see that everything else just kind of works the same if we did this right probably this needs to write try on him but otherwise i think that it should still work which would be super fucking sick Uh, except that uh, expected three arguments found two, right? Because this is supposed to be um, display here. And then no field name op, right? We forgot a very crucial part of our code generation here, which is that each each request gets an op, an op code that is its index into the array. So here, all we have to do is write the op code here. So I'm gonna turn this into a multi-line string, like so, okay. And uh, we don't need to put new line here. And now we're gonna say, const op is equal to uh, some number. And this number is going to have to come from like the index. So here we're going to have to do like zero onwards, attach that to a variable i, and I think that'll do what I want it to do. Um, so we'll build again. Uh, I forgot a fucking semicolon. My life is so fucking hard sometimes, man. <laughs> uh, copy and run or build again, I guess. Not marked pub? God fucking damn it, man. Fourth time's a charm? Fourth time's a charm? Um, copy. Uh, I guess we need to WL gen. Copy. Zig build. Alright, alright, alright. Wait, that's super sick. It fucking works. It fucking works. That's so fucking sick. So... I'm not going to go through the process of adding every single, of translating every single one now, um, because I think that uh, it's not really that exciting. What is exciting is the fact that this is doing 
exactly what we expected it to, right? So here, oh my god. We have this interface, WL display. He has a thing on him. He has the ability to kind of arbitrarily write field, like write structures that have these things. And we wrote this earlier today, which is pretty cool as well, where like this writer kind of iterates the fields in this structure and kind of packs them into the struct as they should be. So this doesn't have to be a packed struct that is like a binary, perfect binary representation. This is kind of like an intermediate representation that is very close. Um, I would maybe, there is a problem for sure where we haven't handled um, the fact that the, the, we were missing handling of the, uh, what's it called? The has interface flag. This is a very important field that we have to fix, but otherwise, otherwise I'm quite happy, quite happy with how this has gone. So, um, I'm going to call it there because I'm at five o'clock. So we're much later than I usually go. Um, but I think it was worth the extra hour for the extra fun. <laughs> So thank you for watching, guys. If you like what you saw, we stream most days at around uh, 1230 Pacific time to four o'clock Pacific time is like the usual schedule. Um, sometimes things get adjusted, like we skip happy hour and do two to two onwards only. Sometimes we go a little late. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, you're seeing what is the mainstream, we call it. And then there's happy hour, which is 1230 to 2, where we kind of do like either investigatory stuff. Like uh, the other day, we were kind of like looking through Mesa source code, Kuyumu source code, Linux kernel source code, trying to understand like how things fit together. We might be doing like cleanup stuff. So today we were working on kind of figuring out what is like the pattern for how we want these uh, interfaces to look like in our source code. Um, we do like cleanup work, stuff like that. Um, or like small tasks that don't need, don't deserve their own stream. So if you want to see those, those are archived on Patreon or the YouTube member section, or you can swing by on Twitch if you want to see them live. Um, if you're watching on Twitch, there's a YouTube link in the Twitch description swing where you can uh, catch uh, previous streams or if you miss them. So things are organized into playlists. So if you want to check that out, that's available. Um, this stuff will end up on GitHub eventually. Probably not today. Um, probably once we have like a first initial commit. It's probably when that will end up there. Um, what else? Trip typical streamer things. Like, subscribe, use your Twitch primes. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you guys for watching again, and I will catch you tomorrow. Uh, bye YouTube and Twitch. Let's raid someone.